Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to do part 12 of FlexPress with Adobe Flex. And we're going to deal with the tile list component, and we're actually going to make a custom tile list component. So here's the ABCs of tile list. And A, the tile list lays out items row by row and can make objects interactive like a list or combo box. Why not use a repeater instead of a tile list? The repeater component is best used when the amount of content fills a single display screen. The repeater generates all visual controls in the flash player memory, even those off the screen, so it's bad for large data sets. C. The tile list only generates what you see. As you scroll, it generates the objects. In addition, with the tile list, you can move over objects and select them. And there's also a horizontal list. Now we're going to deal with states and create a navigation system in this tutorial. So you need to go to my YouTube tutorials part 1 through 5 on building over the Rhine website in Adobe Flex and there I discuss how to create a state navigational system. We're going to use that in this tutorial without not much discussion on how to create it. So last time we had created a custom list box component and it had an image, a title, and a date. And now we're going to create a custom tile list component. Let me show you how to do that. Let's get out of this. And we're going to go over to our components uh, folder and create a new component. And go to new and mxml component. And we're going to call that component my tile list component. Not very creative here, just a name that we can remember. And now let's give it some dimensions. And the dimensions I'm giving it are just basically found by trial and error and working and resizing the application so it looks right. So we'll make it 250 by 200. Cool. And we'll click Finish. And so now in our Components folder we have a My Tile List component and we have generated some code right here. And as we did before, we want to turn off the scroll policy because automatically these scroll bars are spawned and we, won't, we don't want that to happen. I've actually brought the uh, label down a little bit to give us some room. And as you recall last time, we want to go vertical Let's get some code hinting here. Scroll policy and set that to false or off. And horizontal scroll po policy and set that to off as well. So we're good with our scroll policy. And what we want to do now is put in a label and a text area component. So what we can do is go back to the original code. Let's do that real quick. My thumbnail. Let's go to design view. This post right here has two labels and a text area, and I actually want to bring that over to my uh, tile list component, so I'm just going to copy these and bring go back to my tile list component, and I'm going to paste those in. Now, it's going to get pretty easy here because we just have to replace a few things, and this will actually become very functional. We're not going to use a repeater component anymore, so we're going to get rid of the repeater, but as you recall, we're going to use a data component. So in this uh, tile list renderer, it uses the data component in curly brackets. And we have our labels. Once again, that's our post label. And here's our date modified. Once again, we're going to use a data component. And then we're going to use the data instead of the renderer to bring out the uh, object that we need. So once again, just using the same renderer code but just basically copying pasting in the data uh, tag instead. And we worked with that in the last uh, um, lecture so basically the tile list works exactly like the list box and the combo box in this sense. It has that magical data tag which brings in the object as it renders. So, And you can refer to the XML tag just by using the XML node and that is super cool. So now I'm going to go to Design View and I'm going to see how things look. And you can see right now things aren't quite uh, put in the right order. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit. And we're going to actually shrink things a little bit and get them all uh, sized correctly. It's way long. So let's go back to the source code and actually make that smaller. We see it's just way too long. We want that size to be maybe 200 in width. So let's change it to 200. We couldn't quite grab it. So we went back to the Design. And that should be fine for the text uh, component. We can see that the label, one of the labels is stuck a little too far over. And let's go look at our X value. 
we can see it's way over here at uh, 358. Let's make that uh, 35 and see if that shows up. So I'm going to go to Design View. And now we can see both the labels, and the text is starting to fit in, so that's good. We're making some progress here, kind of slow, but making some. Here's our post title, and here's our date, and uh, those are just kind of large, so we're going to resize those. There's just a little bit of resizing going on here, and uh, we'll just make it 12 again. And the other one will make 12. And now we can fit them both in there. Now a little bit of time taken here, but what I want you to see that I'm doing is I'm going back and forth between design and source view, and you need them both to really uh, put together a great project. So I'm just going to leave that like that, and we're out, now we're going to bring this and instantiate this in the main code. All right, I'm back in FlexMyThumbnail.mxml, and I want to actually create a navigation system. And to fully understand this, you want to go and watch my uh, Over the Rhine series, uh, part one through five, building Over the Rhine website in Adobe Flex. And in the first five videos, I deal with creating a state navigational system. And I'm going to do that right now, fairly rapidly. And what I want to do is go to Design View, and I'm going to bring a few buttons out on the stage. And let's do that right now. link button. So we're going to create that navigation system and we're just going to use a link button. So let's drag four of these link buttons out. One, two, three, and four. Now I want you to notice real quick here that I am in what's called the base state. So if you look over here at, bit, at states, I am in the base state. And that's going to become important as we create other states. So we're going to call this, double click here and call this state 1 or view 1. We'll call this view 2. Not being very creative here, just want to get some understanding of what's going on here. We're going to call this view 3. And we're going to call this view 4. And so when I click on these buttons, I'm going to go to different states. So I'm actually now going to generate the states I'm going to go to. So I'm going to right click on the base state and go new state. And we'll call this view one. And I'm going to set that as my start state. I'm going to create another state. I'm going to call it view two. And another state. And all of these are being created from the base state. We're going to call this view three. And another state, we'll call this view 4. Cool. And I want to go back to the base state, and I'm going to set my navigation system. And I'm going to come over here in the Flex Properties, roll over the Category View, and click on that. And I can see I'm going to go to stay in the base state. I'm going to click on that button, View 1. And there's an Events tab and one of the events tab is click so I want to click and go to current state whenever I click on that button the current state I want that to equal and you must use single quotes here view one so when I click on that it takes me to view one okay let's go to view two and go to the click event and I want my current state whenever I click on that I want to go to put single quotes view 2 and it has to be exactly spelled as the state name let's go to the next one and double click on that and that current state needs to equal and put single quotes view 3 spelled exactly the same and finally we're in uh, the last state double click on that and that current state needs to be equal to single quotes view 4 now it's very important that you do this in the base state where a lot of people make mistakes is they get in a state like view 2 or view 3 they put all these click states in here and they don't work because you start up in view 1 and it never sees them can't go there so you want to make sure you do your navigation system in your base state but never use your base state as your home state 
We're going to let our v view one be our home state in this instance. And now we're going to go to state two. And in state two, I do not want to have this item here, so I'm going to delete it. So just hit backspace. And I don't need the list box either, so I'm going to delete it as well. So now let's test this and see if we go to state two, and there should not be anything there but the navigation menu. And then we should be able to go back to state one. So let's control test. So we start off in the view state one, that's our home state. If we hit view two, we can see there's nothing there. View three, we do have the uh, content back. View two, there's nothing there. And view one takes us back to the initial state. What we want to do now is put some content in view two, and that will be our tile list component.